Yo, Kippe Sky here. Hey, so we're doing probably the most scariest thing that I've done, and I'm about to install some insuling speakers sent by Sundavo. Uh, they sent out their IC860CFs. These are for me. They saw that I'm moving into a new home, that I have a dedicated space, and they said, hey, here are some insuling speakers for you to test out and have to your home theater. So I have four of them. They sent me out four of them here because I do plan to run a full Atmel system, at least four speakers for now. And so they sent me out their eight inch version. This is what I chose because I've been running the prime elevations, which are sitting over here. I'm going to sell these actually. I have a pair of black ones and a pair of white ones. I'm going to sell those because I'm going to install the Sundavos instead. And the reason why I chose such a big size, they have smaller sizes. I chose a big size because those did great, but you really have to turn them up to get them loud if you have really tall ceilings. But these are 8-inch drivers with much more power handling, so I should get a lot more volume out of them, which is what I want. So here is the speaker outside of the ceiling, and this cover here is paintable, and it's magnetic. This is the speaker itself here with the tweeter design. Now this one in particular doesn't have any angling, but they do have models that you can use to angle. But you do have a little bit of adjustability here. So this is your high frequency booster, and this allows you to plus 3 dB, zero, or negative 3 dB your tweeter. So you can decide how you want your sound. I'll probably leave mine at zero, but I can switch it once everything is installed. So here is the construction on the back side here. So we have are, I guess you can call them clamps here. This is what's gonna hold on to the drywall, to the ceiling when you screw them down. And then here is where your wires are gonna go, just like you're used to. These are positive and negative terminals here. And this is your crossover and all your circuitry because it is obviously separated between your mid base and your tweeter. So this is going to sit in the wall, in the ceiling, just like this. And then those red clamps are going to clamp on. You guys can see this one's taller than this one. It's gonna clamp on when you screw them in so that they grab onto the ceiling. So they not only give you instructions, but they also give you some templates here. So they give you two, one per box. So I have two boxes that comes with two in one box, so I get two panels. So this template here is where I think that I want my first speaker. I've looked on Dolby Atmos's website and they say have it about as wide as the speaker. I'm not gonna have it quite that far away, Maybe, I'll see, but that's what I think I want mine. I'm gonna make it equal distance on the other side and then so on and so forth um, with the other few. So that's what these are here waiting to be installed. Now, I am a bit nervous, but I do have a good chance of doing this correctly because I do have access to the attic. This is a fully insulated attic and I have a good idea of how I'm going to do this. So you don't wanna make any mistakes and drill or cut a hole in a spot where you can't install your speakers. Of course, there's a lot of electrical up there you wanna be mindful of, but there is also a lot of joists. So inside the manual, Sundavo does suggest cutting a very small circle out of where you think you want your speaker to be so you can see if you're close to a joist or not. I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to drill a smaller hole than that. Right now, this is being held by a screw. I'm gonna fish up there um, a wire, like a wire hanger or something, and go straight up and then go into the attic and find that so I can see how close to Joyce I am. That way there's less to repair. So I'm, I already put a screw in the ceiling itself. I'm going to put a wire up through that hole and find that wire inside the attic, like a, like a hanger or something like that that you can fish through and then find that and so you can see how close you are to some Joyce, which will help you find the other one since you're gonna be pretty much on a level parallel playing field. If there's a joist there, there's more than likely gonna be one on the other side. So it'll help me find things without doing too much damage to the ceiling. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. So instead of drilling a hole, <laughs> I'm gonna put a small pin hole through so I can stick something through it and find it through the other side. And then I'll know if that's where I want my speaker to be or if I need to shift it or whatever the case is and rinse and repeat for the next three. I'm nervous, but let's do it. All right, <laughs> well, the damage is done. There's no going back anymore. So the wire fishing the rod through was a perfect plan. Made it super easy to see in the attic where my hole would be, making sure I'm not hitting a joist. Then there's a lot of insulation in there. So I actually moved some of it out. Um, I took a really 
small leaf blower on the lowest setting and kind of just move some of this stuff out of the way um, just so I could see where the joists were. And it turned out that my original hole was close to a joist and my speaker may have not fit through it. So I moved it over a couple inches to the left and now I know that I'm clear. So I just cut a hole out. I thought I was gonna use a power tool. Honestly, this is not hard. It is a little bit of manual labor, um, but it cuts really easily, especially if you get the right angle. And you can pretty much make your perfect hole. Now I drilled, not drilled, but cut my hole slightly smaller than my outline just to make sure I don't go too big. I can always cut more, but I can't cut less, right? So I'm gonna put the speaker in the ceiling now. I have it right here. I'm probably gonna be a little too small, but I am gonna try to fit it through. Let's see if I... Yeah, we're just a tad bit too small, which is okay. So we're gonna take care of that and then we could put this through. So that's good. I know that I didn't make it too big. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so I can fit my speaker through and we should be good. Speaker is in. And honestly guys, I did wear a mask when doing this, but I did not have safety glasses. I went out and bought some. You do not want this stuff falling in your eyes. It is going to, it is a mess. This is what's down there. I have a trash bag that I'm actually gonna tape on the ceiling. So as I'm cutting it, it's gonna fall into the trash bag. I'm gonna do that next. But we have the speaker in and that's the magnetic grill that's attached to it. I just gotta clean off my fingerprints and stuff around the ceiling there, but that's how it's going to look. I'm gonna have three more to put up. So not too bad. So as long as we know what direction the joist goes, they go this way, which is good because as long as I stay within the same plane, I know that there's not a joist here. So I'm gonna use that measurement to know where my joists are at. It's usually in between that speaker there. So I just gotta stay in line. So I have a measuring tape because I want them to be the same distance away from the listening position from the main speakers. You guys can see they line up with the main speakers just like they should. So I'm gonna measure the distance from the wall to the outside of that grill. And that's what I'm going to do. Actually, I'm gonna take the grill off and do measurements from outside, from the wall to the speaker, the middle of the speaker itself. And that's where I'm gonna drill my hole over there on that side so I know that they're the same distance. And then of course, I will do the same thing over here. So I'm gonna get all this done and I'll see you guys once all four speakers are up. And I'll show you how I'm gonna get the wires from there to in there. All right, two hours later, three speakers in the ceiling going on for number four. And I wanted to tell you guys something before I finish this. I'm gonna turn this light off so you guys can see, maybe not. So the red tape here, I'm gonna tell you guys, this is a really nice little trick to make sure that you're even with your speakers. So this electrical tape here goes from one speaker to an, where I think I want the other one. And I wanna make sure they're in line for two reasons. One, because if I know that that's in a spot where there's no joist, then all the way down that line will also be where there's no joist. Secondly, it makes sure that your speakers are in line. Here's an example. This is the first one that I started with and I made sure that it's in line with the speaker over there. So using the red electrical tape, give me a better visual because trying to eyeball this, you're not going to get it. I promise you, you're not going to line up. It's gonna look straight to you to the eye and then when you jump down on the floor level, it's gonna be way off. So use some sort of string, electrical tape, whatever, to kind of measure where you are so you know that you're going to be in line with the speakers. So this was a really helpful trick and I'm glad I thought about it because I don't think that I was gonna figure it out <laughs> otherwise, but you guys may be able to hear we have audio in these three speakers. So I have one more to put up and then we're freaking done, finally.
Oh my goodness, I'm so happy to be done. Probably a total of two and a half hours to do all four of these speakers. Drill a hole, fish the rod through, go into the attic, find the rod, make sure it's not too close to a, a joist. If it is, move it over. Then drill a hole big enough to get your, your uh, tooth saw in there, what you can call a drywall knife. And then you put the speaker in, go back into there, wire the speaker in, close the the legs so that you can screw them into the drywall go <laughs> route the wire to the closet and then plug it up and then put the cover on four times it was tough so i put a little hole in the ceiling of the closet here in an inconspicuous spot you can't even see the hole you can see the wires but you can't really even see the hole so if i sell my house anytime soon i nobody's going to suspect there's a hole coming through the wall at all so this is the rack like you guys know this is the Dolby Atmos setup. So I'm super excited. Um, I haven't calibrated the system at all. I just plugged everything up in here and reset the Anthem when I moved in. So I have no calibration at all. I've been watching a few movies, listening to music with no calibration. I've been really impressed. So I can't wait to do calibration. That's what I'm gonna do now. I'm not gonna do a Dolby Atmos demo today. That's why I played some music and all, all four speakers are active. I disable all subs and all of the speakers and you're just hearing the Atmo speakers. So I'm really impressed with these because essentially it's an infinite baffle speaker, meaning there's no backing to it. It is an open space in that attic. So it's just using the attic as its own box. And it sounds really good. There's actually a good little bit of bass and it fills the entire house with sound, even though they're inside the attic. I can hear it through every part of the room, which may not be good <laughs> when somebody's here and I'm watching a movie. But I'm very impressed with them. They were very, they're really easy to install. I don't think it could be any easier than what it was, but very easy to install. And they look really good. I haven't decided if I'm gonna leave them open like this or leave them white with the covers. I mean, my speakers are white, so it kind of looks cool where I can play them the same color as the ceiling. I don't know, but right now I'm gonna probably leave them with the covers on just because my speakers are white and it kind of ties in that white and gray theme. So thank you again to Sundavo for sending these out to me for review, for install. Thanks for hooking a brother up for his new home theater. They will be in the description box down below if you want to see these that I have now and a couple other options that they offer you. They offer different models, different sizes, ones that angle, so on and so forth. So again, thank you Sundavo, you've been great. If you guys haven't realized, I am using a Sundavo power conditioner down there. I've had a uh, Sundavo amp in here, Sundavo products all over the place. So they've been a really strong supporter of the channel. I love working with those people. Um, they make really good stuff. So description down below, will have these speakers to their website, all that good stuff. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you guys think of my job. Did I did a good, a good job or not. If you're going to do it on your own, I recommend only doing it if you have an attic because you're, you're going to need to get in there. If you don't have an attic, I don't recommend doing it yourself. It's really hard, even with an attic. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button and subscribe if you're not already because we're going to have some more fun. Stay tuned. Keep this guy out. Peace.